Arsenal Football Club, once the undisputed kings of North London, almost 20 years ago spearheaded by the likes of Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp, Sol Campbell and Ashley Cole to being invincible, now they are actually very invincible. But what is wrong with Arsenal Football Club? I actually got my second jab today uh, for the vaccine, you know, the COVID-19 one. So I've got 5G now. So let me just beacon out like a signal and relay the message that I've been sent. Yo guys, it is your boy Niran here and welcome to yet another video talking about Arsenal. I feel like these lot are paying my bills at the moment. It's been quite a quiet period actually, if anything, for Gunners fans. We're in the middle of an international break, some rest bite from the usual calamities and honestly, clinical depression. You thought it was bad when Unai Emery was in charge. What do you mean? Uh, and I feel for Gunners fans, because honestly, I j this is this feels worse than we were as a, as a Liverpool fan in like 2011. And we had Paul Koncheski at left back. But I'm not just going to grill Arsenal fans today. They've had enough of that. No, I'm not just going to talk about the fact that Tom Grennan is a better fullback than Callum Chambers. But it's more to do with what exactly is wrong at Arsenal and how they're going to get out of this situation. Because unlike a lot of problems, with certain clubs, there's just so much going on. There's so many reasons, it feels, why Arsenal are struggling. The start of the season came in the form of a 2-0 defeat to newly promoted Brentford, a side who hadn't been in the top tier of English football for over 70 years. And they were defeated 2-0 and pretty comfortably in the end, although without some key players. They then went to Chelsea and rolled over to them and lost 2-0. And their most recent defeat was a slapping uh, against Man City. 5-0 the result there. Granit Xhaka's red hand. I mean, the Amazon documentary crew were probably loving seeing that double foot come in. He then got back into the changing room and probably double footed the physio as well. I mean, I mentioned all or nothing. That documentary is going to be award winning. Probably not for the correct reasons if you're Mikel Arteta, but there's gonna be far, there's gonna be too many nominees for best supporting act. And the Academy Award. I wouldn't even be surprised though if Arsenal lose at the Oscars given they lose everything else, including their own dignity. They can't even win best original score because Norwich got dumped 5-0 by City the week before. These lot wanted to be in the Super League half a year ago. They'd have got a points deduction for this foolishness. They'd have been relegated from the Super League. They'd be playing Empoli on a Thursday night by now. To be honest, in truth, they've got to worry about relegation in this league as well. And now live on Sky Sports a relegation six-pointer basement battle as Arsenal take on the Canaries in Norwich. He's a f***ing sh** lie. And one counterpoint here would be that it was a hard start to the season. You know, they've got to face the, the European champions and the reigning Premier League champions in the first three games of the season without scoring a single goal. None. Zero. It's just hard to not feel concerned about Arsenal's rest of the season here. You know, Bernd Leno's got less protection than Lacazette and Odegaard in the showers. The Thierry Henry statue could have done better at centre-back. And it's a statue, and it's on its knees. Like I said, an Odegaard again, don't get any ideas. They brought in Ben White, but Gabriel's struggling. Rob Holdings fighting for his hairline, let alone fighting on the pitch. Pablo Mari still probably on the floor from the Lukaku incident. Hi, Rom. Yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm still falling, mate. Uh, they brought in Japanese defender Tommy Yasu from Bologna, but apparently some agents involved in a deal don't even know what position he's going to play. You know, we were talking about the um, right back that Arsenal have signed, uh, Tommy Yasu. Yeah. And I mentioned that agents involved in the deal that contacted me to say, do you know any other Premier League clubs, or any Premier League clubs looking for a right back? I've just got a message to say, Tommy Yasu uh, was offered to most clubs in the Premier League. He's a good player, but the problem is he's not really a right back, nor is he a central defender. I'm not sure how he will get on at Arsenal. So that is one of the agents who was trying to find him a club. But just confirming the information we have <laughs> is that is that the How did that even happen? Someone's got to take responsibility in the scouting department. So you've seen Takahiro play now. Give me a little bit of information about him. Does he fit the style that we need? I mean, he's definitely a footballer. 
Okay, I mean, yeah, we, we know that. Okay, well, what did he do during the game? Nah, he put in a few tackles as well. Oh, okay, so he's a defender then. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. And I think this is the problem, you know, there's so many areas of this club that could be held accountable. And Arsenal fans, to be honest, I mean, some of them aren't helping because, you know, they, they're going along with it and accepting mediocrity. But a vast majority are done at this point. They're losing their patience. And it's going to reach boiling point, you know. The fans are going to want Arteta's head. Ty from Arsenal Fan TV already furious at this stage. Robbie, I'll be honest with you, I'm mildly disgruntled. And I mentioned personnel problems, managerial problems, system problems, but there's problems on top of that as well when you've got the likes of Willy Ann on £300,000 a week. And I know that he's now left, that was brilliant, they've mutually agreed that as well so they don't have to pay him any more. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if Edu, with his negotiating skills, still offered Willy Ann a further 400 k to stay. I mean, you've given the guy a three-year deal. Like, Willian, realistically, if you are, if you asked any Chelsea fan, most would probably say he had his moments. It was that one season where Azar didn't really turn up, where he was actually very good. But kind of other than that, didn't, you know, produce what he should have done and was a bit underwhelming. So why, at the end of his career, are you giving him a three-year deal? Like, he's not even good enough for Chelsea. He said he wanted to win the Champions League there. I mean, I don't know whether autocorrect did him dirty and he meant the championship or he came out in the media and said, that one of the main reasons he wanted to leave was because he was promised a project and the project simply wasn't there. Him saying that he went to the project and he was disappointed is like an arsonist arriving at a building site and asking where the block of flats are. He's got places to be, things to burn down. Now I've glossed over a few different aspects here of the problem, but let's fully break it down and get properly into this. We'll start with the first problem and that's Mikel Arteta. Now he's been getting all the flack. Let's be real, the manager always always does in these situations. He's the first man on the front line that the fans can blame. And it's usually easier to get rid of one man in a manager than get rid of an entire squad of underperforming players. But for me, Mikel Arteta just simply isn't helping himself, you know? I mean, there's the obvious problem of his poor man management. There's probably a starting 11 now at Arsenal that dislike the manager. Not only are you gonna end up with a high turnover of players, but the dressing room's gonna become toxic. But for me, like, the most annoying thing about him is he's tactically far too stubborn. He clearly knows knows a lot tactically, all right? Let's not pretend that he knows nothing. He was the second-hand man of Pep Guardiola at Man City. Like, he clearly knows what he's talking about. Not only having learned a decent amount from Pep, but going into the job, Pep's not giving him that role if he didn't know what he was doing. And clearly, he wasn't the one in charge of doing the man management, so clearly he was offering something tactically to Pep. But he's too stubborn, okay? And, like, I don't understand this. Like, I always see people talk about, oh, Arteta, he doesn't have the players he wants to play the style he wants to. Well, play a different style then. It's simple tactical 101. Because you cannot do basic one plus one. If you've got a squad that can't do a certain thing, don't ask them to do it. You wouldn't go to an eighth tier English side and ask them to play Tiki Taka. You have to assess the squad, look at it and say, what can you individually do? The reason why Sean Dyche always overperforms at Burnley is not because he's doing incredible things tactically. It's because he's looked at all of these players and let's say Matt Vidra or a Jack Cork. Like these guys are good at three things maximum. But he's looked at them and said, right, you can do these three things really well. I'm going to ensure that Every single person in this starting 11 is doing a role, whether it be dribbling down the wing more, using their pace more, and he's getting the absolute most out of them based on the key things they're good at. If you haven't got the tools, don't start building the shed. I just think that a manager imposing his own style and spending loads of money to bring in 11 players that can do that is so much less practical than just looking at the players you have and basing a style of play on that loosely. He spent a lot of money now on players that would fit into his system. We can't even really use that argument anymore. He's had the time to do it. Now onto the board. I don't even really have much to say about these lot, but they simply don't care. And that's a massive problem. Whilst Arsenal might have spent about 700 million pounds in the last two years, that's a rough estimate. They actively do not care about Arsenal Football Club or about Arsenal Football Club's fans. They employ the wrong people. They provide little to none of their own money in terms of investment. And Josh Kroenke appearing at games and seeming like he's interested, it's all 
a trick. The third one is recruitment. Now, in fairness to Arsenal, I did my video ranking each club's transfer window, which you can check out in the description. I swear to God. And I do think there's been a little bit of an upturn in the deals that they've done. Uh, you know, the likes of Atomi Yasu. I think Lokonga was brilliant business. But, like, they're still spending money on players either for further down the line or in depth positions. And they just keep bringing in players who are of a similar quality level to what they already have. They're not addressing the fundamental issues and they keep giving contracts to people they just shouldn't be giving deals to. Stop giving old players amazing God. You're gonna lose them for free because nobody wants to pay the wages anyway. And then there's the squad. Now they do have their weaknesses, don't get me wrong, but they should be finishing well into the top 10. So I'm not saying it's a particularly weak squad. By this mainly, I mean the senior players. They're not taking any responsibility. They're showing a lack of accountability and most of them don't care. You got Granite Xhaka who puts in the old world-class performance then against Man City is double footing Dons for no reason. You've got Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. His hairline is more reliable than his on-pitch performances. You can score a hat-trick against West Brom in midweek. That's fine. I don't care about the global glucose invitational. Lacazette maybe would be a little bit harsh on because he actually looked competent last year. Get him off the wage bill. Get Aubameyang off the wage bill and only then really can they rebuild. And that brings us nicely onto how Arsenal can rebuild. How exactly can they improve moving forward? Win games, innit? Thank you. Hire me in it today. It's a bit of a cop out to an extent, but the easiest thing to change is the manager. I simply don't think Mikel Arteta is the man to lead them forward. I know they're trying to follow on in this model that United have had from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but Solskjaer wasn't as explosive a character. He strikes me as a little bit of a yes man, but equally if I'm Arsenal, you can't get rid of him until you've got someone to replace him. If Antonio Conte said tomorrow, I want to be Arsenal manager, then bring him in now. But other than that, there's not many sure fire people who could fix this much of a problem. You're not going to get a takeover. I know there was the Spotify thing before, but that seems to have gone quiet again. I think the guys in on sort of the edu board level of the club might need a refresh as well. But I don't think the recruitment right now is too bad. And I mean right now as in sort of the last year. I think getting the likes of Willian, Torreira, Bellerin out of the club when it comes to wages anyway is a real big step. They're not going to be able to rebuild this club properly until some of those guys on the match wages are gone. It's kind of like a mini Barcelona to an extent, apart from it's not quite as perilous in terms of the club's future. They need a spine of the squad that actually cares and doesn't care too much like Granit Xhaka because they've got quality, but not enough actual natural leaders there. But are we over-exaggerating? You know, I mentioned that this was a hard start to the season. Brentford have never played in the modern Premier League. It was destined for them to win that first game. Chelsea, the European champions. City can absolutely slap up any body on their day. So maybe we should wait until five, six games into the season, you know, once they face Norwich, Burnley, and more crucially Spurs in the North London derby as well. What do you think is the main problem for Arsenal though, and how are they going to get out of it? Let me know down in the comment section below. I might make this specific style of more FTW, like a little bit of a series, like what's wrong with underscore. Let me know if you think that's a good idea down in the comments, and if there is a player or a team or any aspect of football that this can apply to, then uh, yeah, give me your recommendations. Slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. You can also follow me on social media. He's at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.